recording. All right, so sorry if you guys hear the AC. It is hot in LA right now, so I'm keeping it on. Today, we're talking about this little external on-camera monitor. This is the Feel World F5 Pro X. So I recently shot a wedding with this camera monitor and I shot handheld. Usually I don't shoot handheld. Like I've actually probably never shot handheld on a wedding before, only on gimbals, only on gimbals. So when I'm shooting on gimbals, I don't need an external monitor. I actually don't like it because of the extra added weight, I like to stay as light as possible on a long shoot day, but I went handheld. So I did actually have a use case for an external monitor. I needed something that is bright. I can see it outdoors. I needed something that had uh, focus peaking because I was actually using manual lenses and pulling focus by myself, which was interesting, very different uh, for me because I'm always using autofocus lenses. I needed the waveform so I can see whether or not I'm overexposing or exposing correctly. What else do I need? I need the aspect ratios, maybe sometimes for certain uh, shots, I want to you know, crop in for the nine by 16 um, social media vertical video shooting. Yeah, I need something that lasts along, the battery lasts along, and something that was lightweight. I don't like anything that's super heavy because I don't like holding heavy things for a long period of time. So I tested out this Feel World F5 Pro X monitor, and this has actually been not bad. This is pretty good. Uh, by the way, this is not sponsored by uh, Feel World. They sent the unit out to me so that I can do a review on it and just sort of play around with it and test it out. Uh, not paying me for this, so I get to say whatever I want. All right, so here are my thoughts on this monitor. First and foremost, this is a very clear example of a budget camera monitor. It's only 160 USD, uh, so it's definitely on the very lower end of the you know spectrum when it comes to external monitors. You can get stuff that are very high end, small HD, Atomos, you, you guys know those. Those are very uh, premium devices and they come with premium features. This is only 160 bucks, which is, you know, on the, on the lower end, very low end of uh, camera monitors. You know, everything about it just screams budget. You know, you can even hear the budgetness. Right? For people who know what they're getting into, right? Like people who are buying a camera monitor for the first time, or you don't need any of the premium features that come with the uh, higher end models, then this is for you. This is 100% for you. So this monitor cannot be connected via SDI. It's only HDMI in, out, and it's got a bunch of different ports around it, which are really nice. A lot of uh, different power ports, so to power out and also power in. Uh, on the side right here, you have DC in, and then on the bottom right here, DC out, and then on the other side over here is USB-C in. And you power it via the Sony NPF, you know, the big brick batteries. You just slot it in the back, and then it runs off of that. And because it outputs power as well, you can actually connect your mirrorless camera to the actual monitor itself with a dummy battery. And you can use the Sony MPF battery to power and operate your camera, which I thought was pretty cool. I've never used a monitor that can do that. Um, so this is this is pretty new for me. So that's pretty cool. Although I'm pretty sure that will probably drain the Sony battery a lot faster um, that way. But you know, if you have a bunch of them, uh, you can just power it off of that one brick. Now on the top, it's got a bunch of uh, buttons. They're like shortcut buttons. These are function buttons on the top. It quickly lets you switch between different uh, user set settings. I can easily toggle the grid with rule of thirds, peaking waveforms. Uh, you can set it to a bunch of different things. The screen is actually touchscreen itself, so you can actually tap on the monitor, which I really like. Although it's nice to have a backup set of options for you to operate the monitor itself via hard buttons. You also get a bunch of different mounting options, the quarter inch threading on the top, on the side right here, and the right side, and also obviously on the bottom. Um, and they come with the RE locating pins, which is nice. So you can mount it, you know, any number of configurations. And also one more on the back right here, this golden one right here, I think it is. Now, like I said, when I was looking for a monitor uh, to go shoot a wedding with, it needs to be, first and foremost, it needs to be bright, right? If you can't see the image on your external monitor, you're just carrying extra weight for absolutely no reason at all. So thankfully this monitor can go up to 1600 nits of brightness, which is pretty bright. Um, oh. oh, no way. No way you made it. Jesus Christ, guys, look at this insane smoothie my wife made. Yo, what insane. Okay, thank you, honey. I get to have this while I'm filming. This is crazy. Love you. Oh, you. Mm-hmm, so good. All right, 1600 nits of brightness at the max brightness level. 
really good, pretty decent for outdoor uh, viewing conditions. When I was outside, I also used this uh, included sun hood. You just pop it right on there. And I had absolutely no uh, issues viewing my image. However, I do want to mention really quick that it does get warm to the touch um, after it's been running for a while. Uh, maybe like after 15 minutes, it will start to get a little bit warm when you put your hand on it. Obviously, you're not going to be doing this the entire time. So it's not going to be like burning your hand. But for me, not a huge issue. I'm not touching the monitor all the time very frequently uh, when I'm shooting weddings. I'm just really using it as a monitor and just looking at it. Um, which is fine for me. Now, the second thing that was important for me is the size of the monitor. It can't be a huge monitor. I can't have a TV on top of my camera when I'm shooting, right? <laughs> like, that'd be insane. <laughs> but uh, this is a 5.5 inch monitor, which is the, for me, the perfect size because when I'm shooting handheld, I'm literally just gonna be like here the entire time, right? Like the, the monitor is like maybe like six inches away from my face. Um, so I don't want something that's you know, huge where I have to like back up all the way to like view it like this. That would make my arms a little bit more tired uh, throughout the day. So I would love to have something that's like smaller, but not like small enough where it's like, uh, it becomes like another LCD screen, which is not good. That's too small. So I want something that's like decent size and 5.5 inch for me around five to six uh, inches is like the perfect size. Hopefully I never get to the point where I like mount an entire iPad onto my camera and I don't need a TV on top of my camera. <laughs> and like I said, this is a touch screen screen, touch screen monitor. Uh, I love touch screen stuff. Although in the past, um, touch screens are sometimes finicky. You know, I've, I've used monitors before that are like, you know, you touch it and it lags because it's too hot. And then the touch screen doesn't really work so, and unreliable and it's it just doesn't work. But thankfully, even in the heat uh, of summer in LA, uh, even when it's running after a while, when it gets hot, the touchscreen actually still works. Like it works perfectly fine. Usually cheaper monitors at this price level will start failing that kind of touchscreen test very soon, very quickly, even after the first use. Um, but thankfully this one is really good. This one held up to the heat, hot, warm summer use case. Another thing that was important for me when I'm shooting weddings is how long can the battery last for a monitor of this size? Um, thankfully, because of the smaller monitor size, a 5.5 inch is not a seven inch, the battery actually lasts pretty long. And I'm guessing if it, even if it was a seven inch monitor, it would last pretty long as well. But I went through one of the bigger uh, Sony, I'll, I'll take it, hold on. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, there's no space. These ones are here. These are the Sony MPF batteries that I'm talking about. So this is the big thing that goes on to the back of the camera like this. Like that. And I use one and a half of these batteries on an eight hour wedding shoot. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, this lasts for a long time. So I'm very happy with the battery life. I just need something that doesn't die too often. A lot of times, like some of these monitors have too many fancy things going on with it and they drain the battery so fast, especially when it gets hot. Uh, because of the ventilation that occurs in the monitor, you have to, it just kills the battery a lot quicker. Um, but not with this one. This one is actually one and a half batteries, which is very good for a, a eight hour day in the summer heat in LA. The next important thing about a monitor is gonna be focus being 100%. That has to be, I mean, it's pretty standard by now, but most monitors have all these uh, standard features that it comes with, but focus being is a must have on a monitor because I'm doing handheld shooting because I'm shooting manual and I'm pulling focus for myself. I need to be able to see whether or not I have the shot in focus and also what is in focus. Is it the bride is in focus or is it her flowers that she's holding in front of her that's in focus. If it's the flowers, not good. If it's a bride, good. But I need to be able to see what is in focus. So the peaking on the uh, monitor, you can set it to a bunch of different colors. I think uh, different frequencies as well. So like how uh, much do you want to see of the peaking uh, or how little do you want to see of the peaking? Customization seems to be a huge asset for this monitor. Um, it has a lot of different things that you can program to your own taste, which is great. And then the other thing is going to be waveforms. Uh, waveforms meaning that, uh, you know, the, the zero IRE to 100 IRE, just so that I can see what is blown out. If I'm outside, I want to be able to tell if my highlights on the skin especially are going to be blown out or if I need to add ND or stop down or anything like that. Um, just making sure that the skin tones look good and being able to monitor that on a bigger 
monitor other than my LCD screen on the camera is really nice. The next thing that I like about the F5 Pro X is gonna be the ratio markers. This is really handy for me to uh, be able to see uh, a nine by 16 aspect ratio. So when I shoot, not just weddings, but for also social media content, a lot of the things are that we shoot now are gonna be vertical stuff and we're cropping for vertical. So what we do is shoot horizontal and then crop in for the nine by 16, but we want to be able to see the frame of the nine by 16, just so that we make sure we capture everything uh, that we want into that you know center uh, frame right there. You can also set the transparency of the entire image that's outside of the center nine by 16. Uh, so you can get it completely black so that you can only just see what you're shooting in the nine by 16 aspect ratio in that little marker, or you can have it kind of like semi-transparent or like completely transparent. So you can see uh, the entire image. Uh, which is also really cool. So again, customization in this monitor is a huge thing, which I really love. Some other things, you know, basic stuff that I want to mention are uh, grids. You get the three by three rule of thirds. You also get a whole bunch of other like four by four, five by five, all the way up to like nine by nine, which I don't know if I'll ever use that, but you know, it's there. It's got anamorphic D squeeze for that one time every year that I shoot with anamorphic lenses, just so that I can try it out and see if I want to ever buy a set of lenses, uh, which I never probably would never will. So it actually goes from 1.3, 1.8 and then 2.0. And then you can also set, again, your own customized uh, D squeeze factor uh, so that you can match exactly the D squeeze factor on your uh, lens. On the Canon C70, my only options are, I think, 1.3 or 1.5 and then 2.0, 2.0, two, two times squeeze, D squeeze. And that's it. But for this one with a external monitor, it's nice to have the entire spectrum of D squeeze factors, so. Amazing. And the last cool viewing assist feature that the F5 has is gonna be the custom LUT that you can load onto the uh, monitor. That for me isn't the most important, but it is helpful for people who are shooting narrative stuff. Typically that's for, you know, DPs who are working with a colorist to build a certain look that they want to have for their project. In that case, being able to load a custom LUT to the monitor in order to view it and see what the final, kind of what the final image looks like is really important. Most cameras nowadays, like my Canon C70, can already output a LUT that goes from log to rec 709 for normalized view. Viewing. Um, so there's not much of a need for me to load a specific LUT to the camera itself in order to be able to view it normally. Oh, I should show you what uh, comes in the box. That might be important for you guys. Hang on. Ah, ah. I went back. God. This is the bag that it comes with. This little nice carrying case. It's nice and like soft. It's like woven. You open it up and obviously the monitor is out because I'm it's here. <laughs> uh, but if it wasn't, you would carry it and transport it inside the bottom compartment right here. And it's got accessories on the top uh, half right here. This one is the bracket that mounts to the side of the monitor so that you can attach it through the hot shoe of your camera. Also in the case comes with an HDMI cable. So it goes from full HDMI to micro HDMI, which is good for uh, smaller mirrorless cameras that don't have that full-size HDMI port. You also get a uh, USB-C cable and then a the little bracket thing. And that's pretty much it. You get uh, quite a few accessories, uh, especially this like carrying case, which is like really nice. All right, the last thing that I wanna talk about, my favorite feature about this monitor is the fact that it comes with a little mounting thing for uh, the Sony MPF battery mount thing for a wireless transmitter or whatever other accessories you can attach via the Sony MPF mount. You can mount a wireless transmitter directly to the back of the uh, monitor right here, which makes it a very compact wireless transmission viewing monitor combo. It's very cool. Let me take this apart. And the way the mounting thing works is this is a, just the mounting bracket thing. And it has wires on the bottom that just attaches to the F5 Pro X itself. And so then it gets power through this Sony MPF battery. So everything literally is just powering off of this one battery. Of course, you can connect it via the uh, USB-C cable at the bottom or the DC in on this side right here to a uh, V-mount battery or a gold mount battery. Um, and that way you can power everything through that one giant battery. But if, you don't, if you're not using that kind of setup, everything powers off of the Sony MPF battery. And that's what gives power to your wireless transmitter. So sick, and it just attaches onto the back of your monitor, which is incredible. So cool. I'm gonna connect this back. My monitor. Wanted to quickly note that the HDMI output is 4K. Uh, even though it says 4K on the top right here, the monitor is not 4K. 
Uh, the monitor is 1080p, which is good enough for most people, uh, but the output of the signal on the uh, HDMI is four, up to 4K. So, just wanna make that note really quick. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on the Canon EOS R. I'm going to turn on the monitor. There's a button up here. I'm gonna turn on this guy as well, and then I have another monitor right there. You see it? With this guy, with that guy out of there. Wave signal? Oh wait, my camera's not on. Nice, okay, there it is. You see it? Hold up. So my whole setup would look like this. It would just be the Feel World F5 Pro Monitor connected to the camera, and then my wireless transmitters connected to my monitor, and then that would be transmitting image to the receiver over here, and that one is connected to a director's monitor. It could be a bigger monitor, it could be a small one like this one. Uh, I love this. This is like such a cool feature that I've, I mean, I don't use too many monitors, but seeing something like this, being able to attach <laughs> a little wireless thing on, to, on the back of the uh, monitor is so cool. It's one of my, it's probably the biggest feature for me, like my favorite feature of this monitor. Now, who is this for? Like I said in the beginning, this is a very budget oriented camera monitor. This only costs 160 bucks. This does all of the main things and a little bit more. If you're someone who is looking for their first ever on camera uh, monitor, or if you're someone who's like not looking for anything fancy, just looking for something that just works, the FI Pro X. I can't think of a better option that has that many features available to you on a camera monitor. Okay, so if you wanna go check this out, see if it's the right one for you, go to Amazon, I have a link down below. Use that link, please, that'd be nice. That's about it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go play pickleball right now, actually after I edit. I think I have to edit first and then go play pickleball, but we're playing pickleball, baby. Side note, the, the video's done, by the way, so you guys don't have to stay here if you don't want to, but I got a nice pickleball paddle recently, and it's like, I've been trying it out. It's called the bread and butter, Lo I'll show you, I'll show you. Oh, what the f <laughs> Okay, these are the paddles. Oh, okay, this one's from my wife. This one's mine. They're from Bread and Butter. This one's a Loco. I've been using this recently. <laughs> this thing, like, this thing smashes, dude. This is so nice, like, the way, like, I have so much more power and, like, this is so light. Because I've been using just, like, the basic thing that we bought off of Amazon. This thing, though. Mm. Like, I'm able to, like, rip these pickleballs. I'm really able to like just smash them super hard, drive them super hard. I like, this is so nice. But yeah, that's about it. Let me know if you have any other questions, like the video and uh, subscribe if you want to. Until the next one, my name is Alex Chung. And I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. Jesus Christ, this thing in just freaking rips, dude. Mm. Mm. Hell yeah. Overhead smash. Oh yeah. Overhead smash. Bam, baby. Let's go. Back and drive. Ooh. Back and drive. So nice, dude.